Welcome back to another edition of Ask Layton. I'm Layton Hale, Senior Counseling Advisor with Homeport, and this month I want to talk about the three things every home buyer should know before applying for a mortgage. Now, this is an important topic because every month I get clients come into our classes and I hear them say things like, I don't know why my mortgage application was denied, or I was pre-approved by my lender, but it was for too small of a loan amount and I need more. They think that just because they have a certain credit score that they are ready to buy their house. And the truth is to determine your eligibility, lenders look at three main factors. One being your credit score, next is your debt to income or DTI, and finally, they look at your savings or reserves. Now, there are several types of mortgages, and each one has its own approval guidelines for credit and debt to income ratios. With the government backed loans like FHA, VA, or USDA, they typically have a more lenient requirement than the conventional loans. Now, these conventional mortgages I'm talking about, they are loans that are funded by private lenders like banks, credit unions, and mortgage companies. The government insured or government backed loans are they're insured by government agencies like the Federal Housing Administration, the Veterans Administration, and the United States Department of Agriculture. Now let's take a look, a deeper look into these three areas that lenders look at. And the first one being credit. One of the most commonly known factors that lenders consider is your credit score. Your credit score gives a lender a reasonable idea of how likely you are to repay their loan, to repay their loan. One of the most common scores used by mortgage lenders to determine credit worthiness is the FICO score, F-I-C-O FICO score. It ranges from 300 to 850. Now FICO scores between 580 and 669 are considered fair. So if your credit score is between 580 and 669, that's fair credit. Scores between 670 and 739, that's considered good credit. Now, many lenders require a minimum credit score of 620 to receive a mortgage. Now, they also have some lenders who have some special first-time home buyer loan products, and they could require lower scores than that. But if you get if they require lower scores, you usually have to have more money down or fewer debts. The thing to remember is the higher your credit score, the more likely you are to receive the loan and the more likely you are to get a lower interest rate. Now, there are some minimums that um, the lenders will consider loans. The minimum for a conventional loan, the minimum credit score is around a 620. The minimum credit score for a FHA or a VA loan is 580. Now, these are the minimums that can be considered, but some lenders will still require higher scores to be able to do these loans. Remember that. Next is your debt to income ratio. Your debt to income ratio or DTI is a calculation that shows how much you pay towards your debts each month divided by your gross monthly income. Now, the debts we're talking about, this is gonna be your mortgage or your rent, your car loan, minimum credit card payments that you make, child support, student loans, and then any other loan, any other loans you might have. But it does not include utilities and groceries. Mortgage lenders use the debt to income ratio to evaluate the credit worthiness of the borrower. So the lower your debt to income ratio, the less of a risk you are, and the more likely you are to get approved for your mortgage. Now, Conventional lenders want to see debt to income ratios of 36% or less. While FHA lenders like to see debt to income ratios of 43% or less. Now to calculate your debt to income ratio, you have to divide these expenses by your monthly gross income. So if you find yourself with a debt to income ratio that's too high and you want to lower it, you can do this by paying down some of your debt or increasing your income. Generally, in order to qualify for most mortgage loans, you should have a debt to income ratio 
no greater than 43%, because anything over 43% suggests that the buyer could be a risky borrower. Now, you wanna, you wanna get the lowest debt to income ratio possible, not just only to qualify for the mortgage, but also to ensure that you'll be able to pay the rest of your debts and live comfortably at the same time. Now, finally, let's look at savings. Now, one of the biggest shocks of buying a home is finding out how much it actually costs. So let's break down some of these costs. Now, the first one being the down payment. Now, your down payment required will vary depending on the lender and the type of loan that you choose. For conventional loans, the down payment required is usually between three to 5% of the sales price. For FHA loans, the down payment required is 3.5%. So if we're looking at a $150,000 mortgage um, and we're looking at a down payment of three to 5%, that could be $4,500 to $7,500 for down payment for the conventional loan. If you're looking at a 3.5% uh, FHA down payment requirement, that could be about $5,250. Now, if you qualify for a VA or USDA loan, you won't be required to make a down payment. Now, after the down payment comes the closing costs. Closing costs are the fees you charge for processing and servicing your loan. And that could be things like your title insurance or recording fees. And this can be an additional 2 to 5% of the sales price. So on a $150,000 house, that could be an additional $3,000 to $7,500. And then some lenders require what is called cash reserves. And these cash reserves, uh, they want to see that you have money left over after you pay all your closing costs to ensure that you will be able to make your mortgage payment during the first few months. So if you add up all these costs, down payment, closing costs, and lender reserves, that could be anything from $9,000 to $16,000. Now you can see why it's important to include the savings requirement in your home buying plans. So that's a lot of information, but at Homeport, we can help you improve your financial situation and develop your plan to achieve your goal of home ownership. If you have more questions or want to sign up for one of our free classes, you can contact us at homeportlearning.org or you can call us at 614 545-4895 to sign up for one of these classes. I want to say thank you and goodbye for now.